got the select board to order at 6.04 p.m. Uh, we're, Chris Jarvis is unable to attend tonight, so we're gonna need a motion to appoint a temporary chair. I'd move to appoint Paul Valley as temporary chair. Second. Okay, so there's Lindley and Jean. <laughs> and um, <laughs> there you go. Any discussion? Yeah. <laughs> Other than Paul? <laughs> yeah, there you go. All in favor? That's it. I always have it. So Paul is the temporary chair. That's right. So, okay, so I understand Kurt's not going to be able to join us. Yep, but before that, when we um, we need to approve the agenda. Yep. Uh, sorry, I probably didn't write that on there. So, but I have a couple changes. So you're right. So Kirk White cannot make it tonight, but luckily um, Dietrich and, and Ellie are here. But we need to make a couple. Uh, I need to make an addition to the agenda um, under the Knights of Columbus. I'd like to add uh, the. Bethel Fire Department's request for a coin drop. And that is also going to be after the, we're also going to discuss at that time a change to the Bethel Rec Committee. So I guess we'll do add Bethel Fire Department and the Bethel Rec Committee's request for coin jobs um, under Knights of Columbus. So this isn't the coin drop. It is, but we need to change the date. So oh, basically, we'll be changing oh, okay. it from May 29th to August 7th. So, but I figured we could just discuss them both at the same time. Okay. Um, so, so we'll remove Kirk and add the two coin drops, and that's all the changes I have. Anybody else have any changes or corrections? Move to approve as amended. Second. Line in what ditch? It, it's like a tube. Line. It's for water for the rec for the community garden. We're gonna have to the when when we cut all the way up to the reservoir, yeah. it cut the line and it used to be like a well overflow that would go there. There's a connection and it's I'm not sure we're gonna be able to find it again. So Tim is talking to Laura Perez who has been working on the community garden about running it from the from the pavilion over but we said it has to be it has to be trenched because we can't have kids tripping over it it'll become a tripping hazard and and um so she was going to get her husband aaron who is uh you know he works for vermont rural water to work in that so tim is kind of working that out but i think but that's the issue mm -hmm. yeah yep Okay, so um, that's about the trails. The ice rink, it was very successful. We had a wonderful skating winter. The ice rink was very successful. Everybody loved it. Um, but the issue was now the liner, where to house the liner? We need to put the liner. And so Saturday I cleaned out my garage so we can, um, we can um, store the ice skate rink liner in the back of my is it going to be able to be there without, you know, mice or anything? Because we yeah, could, yeah, we could put it in the basement of. Yeah. 
the yeah. town office. But you have your okay, just as long as you're okay yeah. having it there. Okay, good. Yeah, and someone, I mean, it's going to take like six men and a boy to lift that thing. Yeah. 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 So, so, um, Where is it now? I it's forgot. It's on the ramp, on the oh. handicap ramp inside the pool. Oh. So, in, inside the pool, fenced in area. And I installed it last year in that pool office. Mm -hmm. Now that we're open, we can't, yeah. We can't have it there. It's very big and cumbersome, but. So have we figured out how we're going to get it from point A to point B? My husband. Oh, he's going to do it? I was like, could I ask? He doesn't know yet. Yeah, Alan is, Alan is stretched pretty, Alan is stretched pretty thin right now, but I'm sure we'd be Richard or, you know, we could always ask Richard. Yeah, well, I'll, I, I'm working on getting some guys to do it. Okay. Yeah, because she measured it, measured it and I measured it and I don't care if it's Okay, I just want to make sure you're okay with that. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> good incentive. Oh, thank you, Ellie. Okay, that's good. As long as you're okay, we're okay. Okay, so that's that's those two parts of our okay. Um, and um, oh, and and we just um said that um the coin drop we're gonna change the yep. coin drop because we we're we wanting March of 2020, and then of course COVID hit. 
So they said, we don't have months anymore, so we'll have to postpone. So then um, last summer they said, we're re-looking re at applications. And in December 2020, they said, no, nope, we're not giving you any money. But then in March, um, corresponding between me and, and the executive director, she kept wanting updates of what we were doing, which I gave her, and I was excited and telling her that all the wonderful things we were doing. And so a couple, two days ago, the phone rang at 3 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> and it was her, and she asked for an update. And I said, all the stuff, the donation letter, all of that, we're going to do a silent auction, all this stuff. And how wonderful everybody's loving this Gable Park. And she said, would you like some money? And I said, yes. <laughs> and she said, could you use $10,000? So, nice. so we got that. Um, so anyway, and we're going to do a silent auction. Do we have to ask for permission to do a silent auction? No. Uh, wait a second. Maybe in that new fundraising policy. We'll have to okay. look. We'll have to look. Maybe. Okay. Probably. I'll have probably. to look. All right. So, yeah, I'll look at the... Um, okay. I think you have it, but I'll make a note to send okay. it to you. And so while I'm talking about fundraisers, we do want to um, fill out uh, an application. For, and we have a drive for July 10th. So we do want to add that to our application. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's an application. I, I honestly, up to the top of my head, I too many policies. I'll just forward you the fundraising policy, Ellie. Okay. I made a note in my... Right. Um, okay. So we want to do a bottle drive July 10th. And, um, and there's going to be there's, um, a member of our committee that plays softball, and they're going to have a softball tournament down at the athletic fields. We've already... Um, got permission from the athletic director of the school. It's all set up for them to do a softball tournament, and they're going to donate some of their money to us. So you don't have to run that. Someone else no, is running that. Else is running. Oh, that's great. When are they going to do it? August, July, June. June. In June. Oh, nice. June 26th. Nice. The tournament is that weekend, Saturday, June 26th. Nice. And it's a foundation for two brothers that were yes. killed, or one died, one was killed, and then they're going to donate some of that to the rec facility and then use the money for scholarships and other things. Yeah. 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 So, um, and so that's where it is. And we do have, we do have a person, Kyle Cartwright, that's interested in in teaching some skateboard skills. I don't yep, know Kyle. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out the insurance angle. Okay. So I had sent, he and I spoke, he was going to talk to his insurance company, and then I spoke um, to our insurance company, and we're, we're still trying to work out the details. But we're going to be able to work it out. We just oh. have to, we're just trying to figure out coverage. Not for the kids, because the kids will have to sign a waiver. Okay. But um, for Kyle himself. Are you, is he thinking of doing that in the summer? Yes, he wants to do it like a few Wednesday nights. I w wonder if, and I don't know if this would actually work, but um, the school right now has money. They're looking specifically for summer programs for kids, and I think it's like the middle school has some money that's looking for that age group specifically. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if he could have, like, have the school pay for his time to, you know, help offset some of the cost. Um, well, because he was going to do it for free. He's yeah, and I just I know that they're they're like looking for people to teach things during the summer to those age groups, and that would kind of be a perfect crossover because I know a lot of the middle schoolers have started bringing their skateboards and scooters to school so they can go to the skate park after school. So can I talk with you after? Well, maybe tomorrow because um, I'm yeah, going to bring a program called New Beats to mm -hmm. school, and if you oh. have money because one planet doesn't have money and if we want to do it for the middle school instead of the little kids I can talk to yeah, you. Yeah let me why don't we email tomorrow okay. and 
I'd, I'd have to just loop people from the school in because I don't know a lot of detail. I don't know if it has to be within the school faculty that it's for or if it can be outside of that. I have no idea. Okay. So, All right. We can chat. Yeah. And my last thing is that it's such a good um, recreation committee that a bunch of us worked at Green Up Day at the center removing big rocks. It'll happen this summer, but I can't guarantee you a time frame. It'll happen before they go because we have the um, obviously we cut a swat there to go up to to run some stuff up at the um, up at the reservoir. So it'll be done. Just like we have to do some more. Not everything took that went around the skate park yeah, as it well. Yeah, because last year I think that Tatro worked on that in December, so they weren't seeding it in December. So the only thing they put down was a straw mat um, just to keep it in place. And then I think around the skate park, we had originally tried to seed it, but you can see where the people kind of come off the edge of it. I think that's just going to be dirt. I just don't think we're going to be able yeah. to deal and with that. Eventually, once we build the second phase, we're getting, we've got to put a concrete sidewalk around mm -hmm. the entire perimeter mm -hmm. so that it um, maintains the um, the, uh, the coating, the sealant. Sure. Um, but that's and it'd be easier for Richard to yes. trim and mow around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the time frame yet. They'll be back in June. So I don't know the time frame of when that's going to get dealt with. But it will be dealt with. I just can't tell you when. So um, with all of our good fundraising, we just we're, we're just um, we're, we'll work on what what we can. And, and I don't know when we get to have um, a contract to, to build this. Because you have money now to pay off what you owed on to the town on the first phase, and then you'll have to look at a, you just need to look at a, yeah, you'll have to look at a budget for, um, you know, what does Michael think the next phase is going to look like, and, you know, Shane did a great job designing the first phase. You'd, I, if I was you, I'd save the money and just let Shane design the second phase instead of trying to contract out. I guess then, Ellie, you should probably just try to get a number out of Michael Parker and see if it's something you can shoot for for next year's construction season, because I'm sure he's straight out. Oh, do you? Yeah. So at least if, um, so maybe it's something, then you'll have a number to shoot for and you'll know how much you're lacking in fundraising. So okay. that's what I would do is just ask him, tell Shane, ask Shane to send Michael the next phase drawing and have him price it out. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Shane is great. He's yeah. a great addition so, to your committee. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll the budget. Yeah. Okay. That's what I would do is once you get a number from Michael, ask Michael Parker to estimate what it would be next year because concrete prices right now are through the roof. Yeah. So let's see. But there's a rumor that it's going to come down, but not much. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh. I'm, and I want to try to get some guys to donate the labor prior to the pre all the prep labor because we could probably save. Michael Parker told me that we probably would save about fifteen to twenty thousand if we got guys to do local guys to donate some of the work. And maybe, and maybe it's not just one guy. Like I keep um, I keep volunteering my husband, and uh, <laughs> he said. You know, maybe they could share the yeah. of the prep site. It's true. I mean, there's enough people around that yeah. everybody, you know, that you might be able to, you could get, I could think of five people you could probably pull together down there and just, and they they all know each other. They right. Maybe they'd work together and divvy it up a little bit. Yeah. At least even to give you a discounted rate if they wouldn't do it for free. Yeah, once you've got a, a season under your belt and everybody sees how it's getting used and there's always a question about whether or not Yeah, and and you know the neighbors have all said it's there hasn't been a single problem. I, I asked two sets of neighbors, and they said never a problem. 
never a problem to skate park. So I oh and um I just remember that we got money for benches. Yep. And we had D two resort two benches. Yes, they're coming in June. They're coming in June. So we have two benches coming because that was a grant that we got to. So also on your talks about the social media moderator designation. Okay. Have you read the policy before? Yes. <laughs> just, uh, Are you familiar with it? <laughs> uh, I just have a few things and then you're done. So yeah, I, 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 yeah, I've been reading it. I have, I have a question about the skate park or comment. Yeah. Are we experiencing, uh, you're talking about a, a, a few, in the future there would be a sidewalk around the edge. Yeah. Are we experiencing mud or anything like that because of uh, the use and not having a protective surface around the outside? I think I need to, um, it wasn't terrible this spring the, as far as mud was concerned. It, what's terrible is all rocks and all pebbles and stuff that's coming on. That's what really does the damage to the seal. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, which I have no problem with the ice skating rink, is um, Mills Hardware donated three shovels last year for me to help keep the ice clean. I think we're going to have um, some sort of little stand built and put some rooms there and really encourage, put a sign that says, before you skate, sweep, so that, um, you know, and, and hopefully people will leave the rooms there and they'll use them because that will help. Michael Parker said, you got to keep the dirt off the sealer. So um, I'm going to try that strategy. And you could put out something on Facebook like you did last year. You got people to shovel the ice. So hopefully yeah. regular users, Shane, and people will, will do yeah. it. So that'll be yeah. good. They'll, they'll want the rocks off of there because yes. they get caught and yeah. trip you up. Yeah, because um, it is a safety hazard as well. Something I was thinking of just off of that thought was um, since you'll be reaching out to Michael, Michael Parker, right? Mm -hmm. um, is it worth asking him how frequently we would need to do maintenance yes. to that seal yes. coat and kind of getting that coat so then it yes. could be built into the budget? And yeah, I'm working cool. on that right now. He you said guys. Year, <laughs> yearly maintenance would be just che checking for cracks, breakages, mm. um, but the sealer will depend on the usage. Um, and so right. it's getting a lot of use and he was going to give me a quote so we can build okay. it into the budget. So you're year. already on it. Great. So, I just have a couple things about the pool. Um, we are going to open, and uh, every day seems to be a little bit of a change. It's constantly changing, evolving. Um, um, we did not change the fee schedule, so we can bring that to you because we changed it just um, in the winter, spring of 2019. So um, that is the same. Right now, I have a very small staff. We are limiting the number of swim lessons that we are going to be offering. Um, I have one WSI, which is a water swim instructor, and she can only take on older kids. So we are only sadly going to be offering to levels four, five, and six which breaks my heart because it's the ch little ones that I really want to get the lessons to. But um, Teresa and I had a long conversation. I had a long conversation with the head lifeguard, who will be my, who's my daughter. Um, she's been the head lifeguard at the pool for several years. Um, it was just too risky because the little kids need so much hands-on, one-on-one, and they do a lot of spitting, sputtering, <laughs> and I just didn't want to put her in that constant danger of exposure. So we are going to do only levels four, five, and six. And we should also say that we've been talking about this as an everyday COVID rules change. Yes. So we finally had to make a plan. And, and so we finally just said, okay. And, and so that's been the difficulty of it as well is, and now they're vaccinating 12 years old, but not little kids. And, and, and so the, the bottom line is also, we have to protect the health of the lifeguards themselves so you know we so that's it's been a yeah. fluid process constantly evolving mm -hmm. we are at this moment mm -hmm. 
going to do online reservations, as it said in your packet. But today, I have three people approach me, young people say, hey, I'm taking the lifeguarding course. Or I was a lifeguard at your pool three or four years ago, or are you still hiring? So with that said, we may be able to pull the online reservations, which would be a blessing. If I could get a staff of seven, eight guards, we usually run with a staff of 10. Um, and so if we can do seven, I may pull the online reservations. Um, we are offering new this year to the little guys because they just felt bad and Teresa and I brainstormed. We're gonna offer some mini explorer camps for ages eight to 12. And uh, my daughter will also be teaching those. And they're really just getting the kids out into Bethel, showing the kids what there is here. So there's a three day hike, uh, hiking camp for eight to 12. Um, she's going to be teaching paddle boarding for kids 8 to 12, and then there's a, a birds camp um, that they'll use Carla's Meadow for, and um, that will be for ages 5 to 8, and then a mini camp um, river exploration. And so they'll be doing a lot of flora, fauna, fish, uh, rocks at some of the access points on the um, river. Bethel. So it's really to just get the kids outdoors and get them exposed to what Bethel has to offer. Now, is all that covered with the insurance? Yeah. And waivers and yep. They will have waivers. They yep. have health forms. Yep. And um, because because Maddie is already a life is already on staff, she's covered. Mm -hmm. And when she does these, she'll take another lifeguard with her. So we already covered workers' comp and all that. And then all then the children have to sign a waiver that we received from that VLCT sent us. So then the children, not the children, the parents sign the waiver. So everybody's covered. Yes, and we're they'll, encouraging. They'll, they'll be instructed about any residual COVID, you know, regulations. That are going to oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, by the time we do these, it's going to be after the governor has done, opened the state up, I think, because they're not scheduled until after July 4th. No, right? they're the very last week. Oh, the rest of June. But he's already an aggressive schedule. So, but yeah, we'll, we'll do whatever the COVID, yeah, but whatever the COVID protocols are, Paul, if it's masks and it's masks and we'll do whatever the protocols are yeah. by the governor's order. For, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And Maddie will be vaccinated. So, yeah. Um, so, that, and we are encouraging parents to attend the hiking, the last day hike trip with their, or guardian with their camper, um, and same with um, the um, paddle boarding. And then we're, I'm also working on Family Fun Fridays, and uh, we may not do, uh, we talked, or Teresa and I talked about doing two. It's really gonna, again, depend on what the state does for opening. Um, the most exciting thing that I'm working on right now for Family Fun Friday is I'm working with One Planet and or now middle school to bring a, a, a fantastic program called Youth Beats. It's Rich Regione. Uh, he's very well known in the Northeast um, and he brings this drumming program and he doesn't just drum but he, there's an inclusion and equality and acceptance and non-bullying and this whole huge program that he does. These kids will work with him all week long during workshops, learning how to drum and um, do all these fun things, and then they would put on the performance at a family fun Friday. It would be a fantastic program. I just have to get the budget mm -hmm. to do it, the money to do it. Um, as far as the facility um, pool-wise, um, I've got all the ducks in a row to do the maintenance. The office floor is going to be done, thanks to Paul, got all the prep work done. Um, and um, Barry Tiles coming in to get that floor done so that it's not a slip hazard or a um, injury hazard anymore to staff. And then we're working on the vent system, which is a bit of a challenge. Um, the playground is just about done. That will be finished tomorrow or Wednesday, and then the playground will be all set. So the swing sets are in place, the monkey bars have a new home, and um, it's been a whirlwind of activity at the pool. So we will be open for six weeks, June, July, starting July 5th through August 13th. So three sessions. That's, that's August 13th? Yes. 
All right, thanks. With, this. Um, we're hoping to another fundraiser. Uh, we're hoping to do a duathlon um, on August 14th, so the day after the pool closes. Uh, duathlon for families, and there'll be a swim run fundraiser. Um, so is that for the rec committee? Uh, at least the pool director and a few of the rec committee members, <laughs> and then some many volunteers from the community. Okay. waiver question. Mm -hmm. when, when they sign the waiver, are they saying that they are they're going to be responsible or that they have insurance? So there's a couple things. If they're transporting if they're transporting children, they have to give like their proof if they're taking someone else's children. They have to provide all of the insurance requirements that are the same as the the school. It's a waiver to say that um, if that if their child is going to participate. Yep. Yeah, then and if their child is going to be photographed, do they authorize the use right. of the photograph? And then it also says that they understand that if there's any risk to the child, that you know that we don't ask for their insurance information, but they understand that the risk is that they're accepting the risk. Now you and I both know someone could still sue the sue us or sue the insurance company. That's always you know as it is a litigious well, society. But the waiver is set up from the insurance company that these that the parents are saying they understand the risk okay. and they're accepting it. And about photography. So yeah, if their child is a picture taken, so it's it's an all in one form. And the waiver came from the Vermont League of Cities. Yeah. Yeah. So it was suggested no, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just curious as to whether We're asking people to accept responsibility that they have absolutely no way of. Well, feel, well, I mean, we do. Uh, but the other flip side is if they were to say, yes, I've got insurance, but then that eliminates people that can't afford insurance. So I. Yeah, so we don't, we do not ask for health insurance information for people. That's, we're just basically saying that it's a participate at your own risk. And then. Okay. Um, and the health form, there is a health form. But that's for swimming lessons. That is for, just for the person that is, like at the pool, we have a health form that says, does your child have allergies? If they do, do they carry an EpiPen? Are they, if they don't carry an EpiPen, do you object to the ambulance or lifeguard staff who are trained for state CPR to administer that EpiPen? Do they have, you know, other allergies, or um, do they have history of um, epilepsy, or anything that the lifeguards and myself would need to know if something happened to the child or the adult, the guardian, we ask for the, any adult that brings a child and the child to have health forms, just so that we have some history on what they might, what we might be facing. Um, and I, you know, in the past, for years, they never looked at the health forms. And in 2019, I poured over every single one, highlighted every single one that would really be, you know, something that we really needed to know. And I did that because I was a camp director for 13 years, a massive camp, and we had to know what, right. what to look for in certain that's, situations. That's where my question comes from. I, administer run those things. <laughs> so. Yeah. so we do that for the pool, but we don't for these mini camps we I have did, not I asked for a health form. Had, but you know a health huh? form would need to be filled out oh, you so did. that Maddie okay. would have any idea like okay. if the child was allergic to bees okay. that she would be watching. So they're gonna that. sign the waiver as one thing and then the health form. okay I wasn't aware you were asking for a health form but the yeah. waiver is yeah. one thing and then the health form is separate. Yeah. The waiver is for the insurance company, the health form is for everybody else. Just for our own knowledge. Right. Just and obviously yeah. those are confidential of yes. course. Well, I, 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 understand, I understand it's just that I've, I've run camps and I, I'm aware of those issues so I'm yeah. 
Cookies. Oh, sorry. So Oscar is reappointed annually for once for one year terms, and um, I had it on my calendar for for now. So um, and you said you had a conversation with him, so you got to see the cruisers mark now, and I saw him in the cruiser today. Um, so we're. Um, is, is there any uh, evaluation, performance review, any of that kind of thing? Can happen, should happen. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, I do do evaluations every year, and we and I did an Oscar um, last year. I, I don't know, it was obviously chaotic, and um, but he and I usually, you know, have a conversation every see how things are going. But um, I have never done the formal process with him. Uh, certainly not with Justin either, because he's new. But um, it's something that we we've talked about that Oscar and I have both talked about doing because he is a, he's an appointment so it's unusual he he he, but he, he needs comes to, be to me reappointed. right and he does come to me I mean we we converse yeah. on a regular basis yeah. Yeah. we talk about traffic stops what we're doing he's actually um, I talked to Loretta so I just made a plan with Loretta which I'll talk about later but um, so you know, we converse all the time. He comes to me if he's had pullover, if he's at a stop, if I've had a complaint. You know, I always use the same process with him. I used to oversee a police department in Bristol as part of my job there. So I always go through the same process. I just ask him to see his tape for that particular stop. Don't tell him about whatever, just I need to see your tape for this day. I review the tape and then, you know, taking, and at that point, I'm the only one who knows what the complaint is. Right. And then I watch, well, of course, the person who complained. Yeah. And then yeah. um, I watch the video, and then I'll talk to Oscar about it to see what the situation is. And if I need to get back to someone, then I'll do that. A lot of times I'll tell people, you know, if it's a personnel matter, there's, it's a personnel matter. And if I have to do, deal with it, I will. But I have, but um, a lot of times, I, in my experience, people get flustered when they get pulled over. And, what they tell you has happened a lot of times is not what happened. And I think people are, for whatever reason, a lot of adrenaline or whatever. But um, yes, Oscar can go through the um, annual re evaluations, which happen in you know, June. So I'm happy to, to do an evaluation on Oscar. It's no problem. Good. You mentioned to me that uh, they're going on a full tens in Royalton. Oh, is he? He's going to have to work with the second constable to kind of rework their hours. Yep. Chat with him. Yeah, I will. I just saw him in passing. I mean, that's the hard part is he has a full-time job. Yeah. So and so does Justin. So we're I think Justin worked five hours in the last pay period um, because he's busy. He also has three children under the age of five that he's pretty much solely responsible for. And then Oscar has been busy. I think he's been picking up time. In, in, you know, in Royalton. So we're really only seeing a few hours, you know, originally we'd hoped for 20 hours a week, but we're not, we're definitely not seeing that. Um, but it's hard. And, and to now to be a constable, if the, if the town of Bethel wants a constable that can enforce the law or some of the laws as the select board agrees, 
they have to be have gone through the academy they have to be part-time certified and and that's not easy to find someone who's willing to to be a constable well he was also commenting on the general <coughs> lack of bodies uh, coming out to the force he absolutely uh, it's it's why and he, he expressed some frustration in uh, the standards that they're being held to uh, i think it's true i think in this climate it's really pressure. difficult i agree it's a, it's a very difficult time to be a police officer right now and uh, you know oscar's been great i i knew oscar when greg hired him i already knew who he was from addison county because he'd been addison county sheriff deputy sheriff for many years and um you know he he really enjoys people and i think he has very good people skills and and um so, but I, if the select board would like me to do an evaluation on him as an appointed person, I'm happy to do that. I just, I just think both, it's good practice. I, I, the best evaluation is the constant of what you're doing. Right. Uh, the, 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 but it's also probably wise for the select board, and maybe it's already in the works, but every once in a while to take a look at are we getting what we need with the constable? Yeah. He used to come, and then with COVID, it was very difficult. But um, but before COVID, Oscar used to come to select board meetings like every quarter. So now that we're back and, and, and his schedule, it was very up and down. And so I'll reach out to Oscar and ask him to come uh, to come in June. And then sit, you know, and then you guys can ask him questions. And I think you've always had open yeah, dialogue. I saw him go by in the cruiser, so I'm not sure. It's also hard sometimes if he has an appointment, then he gets a call. But um, I will invite Oscar to a June board meeting. Yep. Is there a way to between? I mean, I, I feel like we hired a second constable to try to make the 20 hours mm -hmm. a week happen, and now we're hearing that it's still not happening. Is there a way to sort of? Push that like they both signed on to do this job yeah. on top of their full-time job so you sort of can't fall back on well I've got a full-time job and a family because I interviewed Justin. right we, I we know were there and when I, he said yes I can make this happen right so it's a little disappointing because I was gonna ask I have yet to see him around town I see yeah. Oscar a little more and he's, frequently now. he's been on I think that um, that Justin has some personal matters that have kind of come to a head or maybe were different than when he was hired. But I have emailed with him and just said, you know, look, you need to get to a select board meeting. Mondays are really difficult for him. But I just said, look, here's the, let's squeak in this time frame. Tell me when you need to be here. If it's seven, it's seven. If it's six, it's six, and we can work around it. So, um, so right, we're so trying to be respectful of those matters. What? Need a motion to uh, Reappoint, yep. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Uh, two questions. <laughs> the review of the situation and the, Yep. And then the personnel that are holding. Right. Okay. So the next on the agenda, I'd like to call this what we're talking about. It's being taxed. Yes. Now, I know in the past, the signage hasn't really been up for snuff. Okay. So, I'll talk to him you know, about it. And, and we have a, a couple of, uh, of, of the boards you know, out front, but they need to have a little more uh, cones, a little more advanced notice. Yep, and they do have, they're provided with a typical layout of yeah. it, and also it says they must provide. So I will make a condition, I will write on here, um, signage, and um, needs, to be, needs to be better than last year. Okay, I'm making a note at the bottom. So we need a motion to approve that. Yep. So moved. Second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. And you said you wanted to change the. Uh, 
Yep, the Bethel. Yep, the Bethel Rec Committee is going to change. Uh, if the board's okay with it, they're going to change from May 29th to August 7th. They didn't have enough people. Can I back up? Just, I mean, I just quit. I looked at this earlier, but I just noticed that uh, their, their certificate of insurance is out. It's outdated. Okay. Um, let me see. They probably just need to. When does yeah, it end? Just need to give you one. Oh, okay. Yep. We'll ask them for a new one. Oh, that's funny. They must, somebody must have had one. All right, and we will tell them that too. Need, yeah, Kelly must not have noticed. Need new proof of insurance. All right, so what we're gonna say is we'll just make that um, Columbus, basically the Knights of Columbus coin drop will be approved pending, pending the, re remove, the re receipt. Pending receipt of insurance. Of updated insurance and um, guarantee of better signage because that's the rules and they are provided with them so the coin drop for the um, rec committee yes they'd like to change from May 29th to August 7th they just didn't have enough staff Okay. Okay. Nope, and then the Bethel Fire Department, they just barrowed, that was the other addition. Sorry, Bethel Fire Department, they're a little late to the party. They actually had always done the 29th, and, um, but they were late, and so um, they were gonna move theirs, but then the um, rec committee had to move theirs. So the Bethel Fire Department, would like their annual coin drop approved for Saturday, May 29th from nine to one. Move to approve the fire department's coin drop. Second. All in favor? Aye. There, sorry about that. So they I were really little. wanted to suggest we sit on it until next meeting, but yeah. <laughs> that would be the rule, and I like the fire department. Uh, That's right. They would be like, ah. Oh. Okay, now the state of the loan fund application for $91,300 for the next quarter. Yes. So I put the application. You've all seen this application before. We've done it a couple of times. So this is, you know, we're moving forward with the next phase of the design. Um, what happens is with these grants is a lot of is they give you the state revolving loan fund you can get it for the engineering and then they'll wrap the engineering into the full construction project so we are still we obviously are aware of american the arpa money for the american um, rescue plan but there's also at least a billion dollars coming into the state of vermont which is going to come in the form of we believe in some grant money um, and we also don't know about federal money so as I've said before, we need to be shovel ready for a project. That's the way that when President Obama was president, when the era money came out, you had to be shovel ready. So, and we need to move forward to the next phase. So it's, um, you know, so if you look at the revolving loan fund application, that's the information is there. And we've talked about the project, the next steps repeatedly, so. Now we arrived at a decision It looks like it looks like the best way to go is going to be to put in the, the pump station because there's availability for you know the, the availability for funding and if there's going to be money there it seems like that's the best way to go without taking them out of the mix um, and it will deal with a couple of issues on that street as well but because if you look at that area the lot, some of those lots are really tight. So trying to figure out how we we're gonna drill private wells um, with all the easements and everything else, the residents you know, obviously want a warranty of up to maybe three years on the well. And it, it's still a big outlay. And um, Alder Janelli did the analysis and it, it, wasn't some, it wasn't as big of a cost savings as we thought it was gonna be originally, unfortunately. Pump station. 
It is. Mm -hmm. It is. And um, but if you can, uh, you know, if we also get more forgiveness and we get some more subsidies, that really it, it puts you right in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. There's also some questions about how you legally go from providing water to providing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked to Bob Fletcher at Stitzel Page and Fletcher about. So mm -hmm. there's there's a couple of issues there. But especially if you look at the lot sizes of those houses. Yeah. So, but yes, they did do an analysis for us. I have, it's probably, I, I'm not understanding, but I have a question on page three. Okay. If the estimated project initiation date is June 17, 2022, how do you complete it by February 28, 2022? No. <laughs> I, I didn't even, tricky. you know what? I just <laughs> read it so quickly, I didn't even, I'll ask uh, Mikey. Mike to update the, I'll ask Mike Maynard to take a look at the date. I didn't even, I just read it and didn't even dawn on me. It's probably the same thing with him. Page three, yeah. good catch Dave, thank you, of SRF loan uh, completion date, question mark. <laughs> That's funny. Question on page five. Mm -hmm. uh, describe any other capital projects that looks like those were capital projects. Uh, what, can, what looks like it's being described a water department. Yep, that's that's all this is. They only want to know what's happening they in only the water want fund. To know water, even mm -hmm. though it's to the whole town. Well, it's it's not because the debt only goes to the water service, only water okay. to water yeah, users. That's. that's that's why I'm asking the yep, question. Yep, yep. And then uh, page six, do we need to describe our on our paper plan? That blocks. Page six. Um, Halfway down. Does ask us if we, um, does the applicant offer a retirement plan? It says yes. Um, we don't have any unfunded pension liability, so we don't have to add anything there. Okay, I just. Yep, no, that's fine. I'm glad you asked. I like it. People reading it. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you need a motion to approve? Yes, because you need to sign it. Move to approve the state revolving loan fund application for $91,300. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With the correct dates? Yeah. So you want to sign first, Gene, and then we'll pass it around because there's a page there to sign, Paul, that'll come your way. Okay, so better connections, grant overview, and steering committee. Okay. So you were all aware that the. Um, that the, here, I'll just pass it to Wendley. Here you go. Yep, thank you. Uh, right here, Better Connections. So it was in there. So you're all aware that we'd received the money anyways for the Better Connections grant. What um, the, and this just, I just wanted to give you an overview of how it was gonna laying out. So the, the grant is gonna be, process will be overseen by a steering committee made up of community volunteers, the town manager, you know, the project manager will be Nicole Sear. What we're wondering is, is there anyone on the select board? Obviously, I will be attending the meetings, but is there anyone from the select board who would like to be on the steering committee? What you're gonna be doing is we'll be looking at assisting and reviewing the RFP, um, interviewing the applicants, and then making recommendations. You know, obviously you'll, make, you'll be on that committee to make a recommendation to the select board. The select board will be the one who has to hire the consultant in the end. Um, so, while I understand there's people who maybe want to have some input, that's great, but if someone actually wants to be on the steering committee, um, that they would welcome that, obviously. Otherwise, I'll attend the steering committee meetings and be the liaison for the select board. So not to deter anyone else who's interested, um, I've agreed to be a 0.5 person on the steering committee uh, overall. I'll probably be involved at times and not involved at other times. Um, so I'm happy to when I'm there, be a representative for the select board, but I'm 
only giving them half of myself. Do you need to slide one no. way or the other? I can steal it. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't. No, no. I, so, not to deter anybody else if you're interested in being on it, but. Uh, I'm wondering the stormwater master plan and the stormwater projects. How will that or can that tie in with what San Diego, for example, is the rezoning stormwater? Uh, so, uh, yeah. That project comes to, uh, comes to fruition. Sure. So, what's going to happen is the stormwater, sorry, the stormwater master plan is gonna review the town. We had maps done in 2015, like a lot of towns, Jim Pease did them from ANR. And um, what the stormwater master plan is gonna, they're gonna come in and they're gonna look at these areas, they're gonna look at, you know, specifically, well, they'll look at the whole town, then they might look at five, seven, five to 10 areas, and then they'll narrow it down to three that they'll give us a design for. We know we have an issue, issue on Falcon Drive that's probably our biggest stormwater issue. And what's gonna happen is once the master plan is done, if we choose, the, the steering committee will be part of choosing you know, what those three priority designs are. Mm -hmm. So um, what we can do is once you have an approved stormwater master plan, it allows you to apply for grant funding um, based on the fact that you have this approval, now you can apply for some additional grant funding. So maybe it will help with Stand Hill, it's gonna depend on what the top priorities are and, how the money sugars out. But it's, it really, in the end, we'll get probably three. We'll get three areas, and it's not a full design, but we don't need a full design usually, depending on the, depending on how bad it is. We might not need a full design. So well, I can't say for sure it's going to affect. Sand Hill maybe in the next you know, couple, three years. Yeah, it will be, and Sand Hill is definitely tucked into a larger project. Will, I don't know what this master plan will call out because all I've seen is your 2015 mapping. So once they come in and do it, Sand Hill may be priority number one, but it, it may not. I don't know. I was thinking it might tie in if we're going to be doing that project. Uh huh. If this would tie into that project. It, it might and it might not because what the stormwater master plan does is it takes a, a look at the entire town and then, like I said, sugars it out. So the timing. Um, it, it, it's just going to depend on the timing, and yeah. and if that's if that ends up being chosen as one of the top three, it will help because we'll get a partial design, and then possibly, possibly it, it's all timing. So I don't know, um, but maybe you just we just don't know yet. So um, so I'll be on the steering committee, and Lindley's agreed to be a 50 percent you know partner as she can and. And if you know there's stuff coming up that you want me there for, I'm happy, you know, yeah. you can always let me know. And I'm not going to do a lot on the front end of stuff, but no. I'm planning to be more involved yeah, as they get into the community pieces where they start. Right, and that's where around. I think the select board can really, is really probably going to shine, is because the front end, we're looking at RFPs, and I've already talked to Rebecca and Nicole about, you know, moving forward with the RFP drafting. And then... People can, we've had a couple volunteers to review the RFP. We don't need 12 people to do that. But what we do need people to do is this community part, mm -hmm. getting people involved to come get feedback. How are we gonna participate in this? How are we gonna get that feedback? Are we gonna do any little, what are you gonna do for a rollout event? How is that event gonna look? So that's what we're gonna need people for. I'm happy to read RFPs and help figure out, you know, make recommendations. Tim will work in the field with whoever gets the stormwater. Um, so I think where the community part's gonna be is, and maybe that's what the select board, obviously at some point we'll unveil at a select board meeting mm -hmm. and you guys will have a piece in the, in the um, uh, hiring of a, of a consultant, but what would be nice is to have you guys maybe even attend those events if they're outside a select board meeting to say, hey, this is when it is and then you guys come and you know, it could be nice. I think when I saw that, I said, that's something I could do. All right. But it wasn't necessary. <laughs> wanted to double up. <laughs> right. Well, you know what, but it'll give you the opportunity to, even if it's not being on the steering committee, Gene, but if you can come to those community events, that would be great. Yeah. That would be lovely. Yeah. I think and like I, there's plenty with this grant to do that we're going to be happy for helping hands on and, any front. And I think that's what Rebecca was saying. Some of it's going to be how many, you know, do you have select board members or other people that maybe aren't willing to be on a steering committee, but be willing to go 
maybe we need a survey done. Would you be willing to go talk to people to get that data? So I, I'll let the steering committee know that you'd be willing to help out with the um, community outreach. Yeah. There's, there's, if, yeah, there's, okay. that's something I'd like to be involved in. Okay, I'll so. Let's put it that way. All right, so. If it's on the steering or not, it doesn't matter. I'll say, Jean willing to help with community outreach. And um, that way, if you want, you don't have to be on the steering committee itself, but you can, when that time comes, they'll put you on their list of <laughs> people to call. Does that sound, does that work in your schedule? Yeah, we can work that out. Okay, I will let Rebecca in. So, Teresa, where is this money held? Let Rebecca in her, in her pocket. Well, uh, Rebecca can now oh. and <laughs> Nicole. Um, uh, they're reimbursable. We usually don't get the money till you spend the money. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we foot the bill, and then once the money, um, and then, you know, in this way, they've laid it out in the grant, so you get X percentage, maybe. So every time we get a bill, it's just like the DWSRF. I, I will submit for the money, mm -hmm. so it's they're all reimbursable. Nobody gives you cash up front anymore. <laughs> also, <laughs> why does it say we can earn interest on the money if they're not going to give it to us up front? It's a good point. It says that about the American Rescue Plan money. Um, Just a quick thing on the grant, because I think it sort of addresses what Paul's earlier question was. And I've had this, and I feel like it's important for select board members to know this so that when you hear stuff around town, you are giving out correct information. This is specifically a planning grant. There's really no money going into implementation of anything. The idea behind it is we do big assessments, come up with some plans, and this grant itself makes us eligible for other grants that if we didn't get this grant, we're not eligible to even apply for. So really, like this is not implementation money, and I've, I have heard enough people around town feeling like, oh, and we're getting 105,000 to improve accessibility in town, and we're not actually getting it to do the improvements. We're getting it to plan how best to do the improvements, make recommendations, and then apply for subsequent grants and funding that will make that happen. And it's, it's a like weird little thing, but it makes a big difference when somebody oh, yeah. is coming into it with the mentality they're going to see changes this year, and then they're not. It's purely planning. But it makes us very eligible for next round things in a way that we wouldn't be otherwise. And the American Rescue Plan money allows us to earn interest, not this. Okay, any other questions about the connection uh, grant? Sounds good. Oh yeah. This is, yeah, this is a this is a treat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this was just one of those things I had met with. As I said, I had met with um, Dave and Skip Griffin, and then it, we'd I'd inquired about the the um, insurance coverage for the volunteers there. So I reached out to Wade, um, who does, uh, he's the one who inspected the facility in 2014, and, um, and they made some signage. I had some emails from he and Bill Hall and whoever else was on the board at that time. Um, Del Cloud was your town manager. And so anyways, I, so I emailed Wade and then he emailed Vicki. Vicki calls me and she's like, hey, <laughs> what shooting range? I'm like, all right. So I went down, I took pictures and sent them to her so she could understand what we were talking about. And I said, look, this is way off my radar because when Dick was here, um, Adams, he took care of it and it was never an issue. It's just nothing that came up. And I was meeting with Dick, uh, with a Skip and Dave Griffin who took it over after Dave, after um, Dick Adams retired because they wanted some rules changed. They were kind of talking about their experiences, what they would like to see. And so that's how it all kind of came to fruition. And Vicki was great because I said, look, you know, at one point when I'd gone through the insurance, I realized the pool wasn't on there. There was like some things that were missing. We had coverage, but we needed specifics. And this just didn't cross my mind. It just wasn't on the radar. So she was great. She's like, look, I don't think anybody withheld, you know, this is just something that happens and it happens frequently. So they had a meeting at Passive and said, look, we don't even know if we want this liability. 
So um, Vicki was great. She was going to reach out to Randolph Fish and Game. There's a club in Barrie. There's another one in, I want to say, Heartland or Hardwick. And she was going to reach out to them. And I said, you know, we talked about it. I said, why don't you find out who covers them and see what it takes. So she gave me one application. I completed it, sent it, asked her to send with it the current rule, the rules and the photos. So they, again, knew this isn't some huge building and, and what it was. So by your June, your next meeting, she's going to have some idea about premiums. I talked to Chris Jarvis about it when he said he couldn't come. I said, look, this is what's going on. And I'm just going to give you an update tonight. We'll have more information in June. And Chris said, look, if people, you know, if people want the range, then they're going to have to accept the premium and it's just going to have to go into the tax rate and that'll be that. So he's, you know, he just said, if that's what the residents want, then they're the majority of the residents, they're going to have to pay the premium. That's what's going to have to happen. So if they want the range. So in June, um, I will have information from, you know, probably estimates. I can bring someone from VLCT passive if we want. Uh, Fred would come over. Um, and Dave and Skip will be here and, you know, to talk about what they're seeing down there. And, but, you know, as they said, for the majority of the t everybody, they've never had a really run in with anybody. Dick never really did either. Everybody's usually pretty good about it. And, and they've done some nice things to keep the area cleaned up and they take care of their own brass and they take it and they exchange it. And, um, you know, they, they did talk, the VLCT passive did say, and I imagine she said this will be true about whoever takes it over, there will be most likely some requirements, whether it's signage or this and that, but it's hard for us. We can't gate that property. Mike Hakera owns the other side. So this isn't like we own all of this land. You know, we don't. So. And it was like last time we had a select board meeting, there was a lot of discussion as to whether or not we even wanted to have the town run a right. that mm -hmm. place. Um, yeah. I mean, you could explore options, I suppose, you know, whether, uh, you know, if you tried selling it to, to Mike Hakra, if you try, but there's but there's the pit there, and there's probably reclamation issues that haven't been tackled. Would be my guess, and you know the only thing I can tell you, my only experience with this type of situation is in a different town is you could discharge a firearm in the village, and the select board wanted to say we don't want to discharge a firearm in the village. Let me tell you what. There were people everywhere from groups outside of the town and the place was packed like I had never seen it. And in the end, the select board was said, if this is what the majority of you want, then they didn't touch it and they just left it alone. And um, I'm not sure if that's still the same, but it's, it's tough and it becomes a very hot button issue. And especially this pit has been there for upwards of 60 years, 40 to 60 years. You do have residents from other towns that come and use it. I asked Skip and, and Dave that, and they said, we have some really great folks that, that come and use it. A lot of times it's been a family thing. But there are some changes that Dick and, or that Skip and Dave would like to see, like making sure that, the, that people have passed hunter safety so that they know they have the ability to, some knowledge of handling a weapon, that sort of thing. And, um, but it, it's, you know, it's tough because you have, we don't have a full-time police department. And so there's just some issues there as far as staffing it. You know, you couldn't staff it. You know, Dave goes almost every single day and um, take, keeps an eye on it, cleans up any brass and, you know, does anything. And, and obviously chats with people there. If he hears gunfire, he will go down. He talks to people, hey, you know, and, he, and he's met some great folks. And if he sees something going wrong, he tries to chat with people and say, hey, you know, maybe there's a safer way or whatever. So we'll have more at your next select board meeting, but I just wanted you to be aware that this was, you know, I, I was shocked. So I just wanted you to be aware that this was going on. And you may end up at the next meeting, decide you want to do a public hearing or do something else. Maybe it just depends on the premiums. I don't really know. But I just wanted to let you know what was happening. Okay, uh, Dunham Road maintenance issue. So
So I talked to Chris Jarvis before, in, uh, before I got him, before he, he called, to tell me he had no input, but yet again he had some input. So he said, I, basically in the end it sounds like he agreed that, um, you know, basically he agreed that you should refer the item back to the road foreman and let Alan make a decision on it. That, and I'm aware that there's a pothole at the entrance from Camp Brook on Dunham, and I'm gonna try to get that taken care of this week because the state's doing some paving, so I have to see if I can, I'm not sure I can get him to do that, but I'll see. Um, and as far as, I mean, I, in my personal opinion, it's, it's Alan's choice to decide whether or not he's gonna use salt or sand on a road, and I can tell you that not this year we had complaints I received complaints because the sand had too much stone in it. Last year, I had complaints because the sand w had too many fines in it. So, <laughs> you know. Well, and some of these rocks can't have come out of. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> are, I mean, it just seemed. Yeah, there's an image there. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will. <laughs> I spent a good bit of time raking about 25 feet. Sure. of my yard, which is beyond the right of way, of rocks, many of them like that, mm -hmm. that had been thrown by the plows over the winter. And, um, but is that different? Is that rocks off the road being thrown by the plows versus the sanding? Because like, he's specifically no, 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 saying... No, I, 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 no it's, it, it's, it's not a sanding issue, whatever, right. but it is... I'm getting rocks thrown back, you know, a good distance back into the yard and wondering if I was wondering while I was doing that, if there was a way of setting the plow an inch higher or something like that. So yeah. I think some of it's hard is when they grade the road, obviously, if there's stones there. And also, too, if people are speeding, they kind of kick it and it's going to go further. And um, so, Yeah, he graded it. I've got, but six inches is a little different. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I just thought I'd share my, uh, whether all those rocks, I don't know. So is that a talk to Dave? Yeah. I believe so. I, I, I can, um, I believe that he has. Um, Dave is a um, frequent emailer. Uh, to me about issues and then I forward them on to Alan just kind of as an FYI or I respond to his concerns. Um, we, I'm aware that there is a large pothole and there's a lot of them and obviously it's on our list of things to do this year is to take care of some, is to take care of the pothole. So, um, but he's saying primarily at the entrance, yeah, from Camp Brook. Um, and Camp Brook is going to be taken care of on Wednesday and Thursday. So, of uh, getting, so. So, what would, would be our corrective action plan for next year? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's Alan's decision. Yeah. You know, I think that while the select board is appreciative of, of Mr. Kent bringing the issue to your attention, um, you're going to refer him back to the road foreman. Now, is, is it just the nature of the sand that we, that batch of sand that we have to have that has these larger um, rocks on it? It could be. I mean, I'd have to ask Alan. I know that we bought our sand, you know, we, he wanted more grit this, more grit less this year because we had more fines last year. It also could be a combination of maybe some material that he had there. I just I know that just recently we had McCullough crushing come and crush, so it, it's possible that yeah he had some bigger stone in that pile and um, maybe you know he needs to make a we need to get a better recommendation of the right sieve test for sand. That's a possibility. I'm happy to, I can ask Ryan you know Slack about it and talk to Alan some more. Um, Maybe that we can monitor the, the, the 
size of the grade to find a happy medium. Okay, and that's that's a great suggestion. That's what we can have the road foreman um, refer to some sieve testing and before he purchases next year's sand. Or get sieve testing results or something, or review sieve testing. Review. Excuse me? I think that extra out of the bag. There's no sifting going on. Who? Us or where we buy it? Where we buy it. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm going to tell them to review sieve testing before purchasing next year's sand. Is that, do you know, is that something that they could do? Randolph wouldn't buy it that way. Randolph had to have it sifted. Right. So well, Randolph bought all their sand from the same place we bought it. Yeah, but they theirs went through a sifter. But oh, so maybe if that? we were requesting, like, yeah, they James did they sift it there? From yeah, they had they were working on another area with a different excavator running through a, a okay. screen, and that's what we just they were just hogging it out of the bag. Okay, so then we'll make sure that they next know. year's sand road sand and. So don't we run it through the sifter here? But it's big. It's big. There, yes. Alan has talked about making a small, finer one. So I think if we just tell him that he needs to re review the sieve testing and, and look at that before he purchases next year's sand, that he needs something with more grit than the prior year and less stones just, than this year. That's, that's really fine. Perfect. There's just balance. the perfect. And he, <laughs> just he, tell he, him to get it perfect, and we'll be fine. Sweet. There's a sweet spot, and he needs to find <laughs> it. Yeah. And well, it's but if they're that, it's and it's it, but if they can sift it like if, like Dave's saying, let yeah. them sift it oh, one yeah. before we buy yeah. it. Yeah. Maybe worth the expense on the front end than having our crew spending their time doing yeah. it. Okay. But there's still a pile over there, so there's going to be some more. Right. Yeah, but and he's also and he's crushed some stuff, so we can talk to him about that and maybe using this material for some other purpose. So. Mm -hmm. well, talking about I guess this next time Dave I'm gonna have to put the tables yeah, over there <laughs> facing this way okay we'll do that next time if you end the meeting quickly enough it won't be in your eyes okay well I I obvious I mean I wrote you a two-page overview I wanted you to I had taken a webinar on last Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday, to let you know, um, I just wanted you to have an overview of where we sat with this and how the money is working currently. What we can spend it on, what we can't spend it on. We have some ideas here that I have heard from our cell, you know, from different people. Um, right now, we know we're getting the 99 per resident. There's a possibility of 149 dollars per resident more, but they have not yet figured out how they're going to spend the county money. Um, so, so this money is 200000 you know, I know they're talking about getting half of it, yep. half of it this year and half of it next year. Yes. So is that, is that the total? Or? This is the total. This is $99 per 2030. So, okay. and, um, so yeah, so we'd get it in two, in two, um, amounts but like I said we still don't know the actual amount because they haven't figured out how they're going to divvy up the county money yet. We do think they the presenters at the time think it's going to come directly to us but that's they're still working out that. The other thing is too this money was coming so fast and so furious that people are you know have been writing to the feds too on guidance on how to spend this what can you do. So I just wanted you to know when we have to obligate it by, when we have to spend it by. This is a, very, it's a, it's a bigger bill. This is a brief overview on what we can do with it. Um, and, and VLCT, like I said, is creating coordination assistance program because I had written to them because um, obviously I have said publicly and will repeatedly say that I believe it needs to go for infrastructure. Um, some of the ideas here are are other ideas that we've heard about or, or talked about either within the office or with other members of the community that, is, that have been brought to my attention. On um, the third one down, when I said consider depositing an amount of money into the revolving loan fund, 
earmarked for lead paint abatement. Um, like I said, obviously the select board will choose again, but it could be at a zero or low interest rate. I asked VLCT about this. They're still waiting for guidance from the feds, but there's a very good possibility that if you gave out low or 0% interest rates over 30 years or 25 or whatever you chose to do, if you chose to do that, that when that money comes back into the revolving loan fund, that, that at this point it looks like those strings will no longer be attached. So it's kind of a nice way to have economic development um, money for future projects is if you don't feel comfortable investing in private property and granting the money out, which you may or may not choose to do, this is just another opportunity, another way to do it. Um, so. I don't see anything in there about increasing select No, <laughs> I think that fund is things you cannot spend it on. Um, but you don't get hazard pay, uh, so no premium pay outside of hazard pay. Um, yeah, so this is just, you know, like it was a, you know, it's a two and a half hour webinar. So this is the kind of what we took away from it. So. Oh, that seems to be the consensus that nobody's still nobody that really knows. Yeah, this is what we know for sure so far. And. Um, Right, but the state's gonna get a billion dollars of their own. And this is, you're gonna have control because this is, this is unusual. And really, you have to thank the National League of Cities. They kind of got, inserted themselves and said, hey, wait a second. And this is one of the first packages, I guess, that they've done ever or in many, many, many years. It's finally coming directly to municipalities. In the past, they've given every dollar to the states and then it's the trickle down. But this is one of the first times that they've actually got it to come to us. I think so, Rivers is going to be involved also. Right? I'm sure they'll have somebody who will help us spend the money. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and that's, what, that's what VLCT. Yeah. Yeah, that's what VLCT is doing as well. And, and Two Rivers is getting a bunch of money themselves, too. They're getting money for a housing survey. They're getting. So there's a lot of money to be had here, but I think in the end, once we know for sure what we're gonna get, then I think we need to have, you know, at a select board meeting, this is gonna be agenda item. And we're gonna come up with some possibilities and, and figure out where we're gonna spend it. The best advice that I think that they, that they gave us um, in here, and, and I had written that in here, was that people are saying, you know, be, be patient, to find out what the data are, but be deliberate and be strategic. And I've provided you with some information from the state where they they came out of the gate saying invest in your infrastructure, because you know. But we're also going to see. Um, but there's also that's also to be said is you know maybe you want to deal with lead, you know, in, in, on Main Street buildings. You know, there's other some things you could do. So if you have this amount of money. There's also, okay, maybe you put the majority of it in infrastructure, but maybe you put a little bit of it in to take care, you know, for some of these other, you know, situations. So, it, it well, will be put. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And and you know, infrastructure is, <clears throat> you know, it's going to last you a while, as, as you as you know. But there's also. Um, you know, there's also some, some good thought here because the other thing is, obviously, they want you to come back stronger. So they want you to think about economic recovery. So if you have Main Street businesses with lead, you know, that's, you know, pain, then obviously it's gonna do better for the turnover of the downtown and the economic if you can get the downtown. Everybody says we want it to look good. Well, I'm sure it's not cheap to, you know, we had to, you know, remove some lead paint in a library in another town. They, they weren't. That was not a service they were giving away. Um, but we also, repairs to the treatment plant, um, hopefully that would be eligible. We, they need a new roof down there. There's the pumps alone, we could spend 75000 And all the debt that the sewer incurs in the ordinance goes on to the tax rate. Water doesn't have that in the ordinance currently. Water currently stays with the users. The sewer is not that way. Um, so it, that's also something to think about. So I thought it would be helpful if you at least had an overview of what we currently know about it. Kind of condense the two and a half hours into two pages. Well, I like the idea of 
if, if it's doable, the depositing into the revolving loan fund as a, a zero or low interest rate. I, I wondered, though, about making it, um, you know, like, a, as far as I know, there's one building on Main Street that has lead paint. Okay. So that becomes only one person benefits from that. Whereas could we think about it in a broader term that still is infrastructure focused, but makes the, the buildings last that much longer or, you know, puts back into the system in the same way as the, the lead paint right. is, you know, a high ticket item. Is there a way to yeah. sort of build in something that others can also. And it's going to depend. Lead was specifically called out in the ARPA money. Yeah. So then. So I don't know. That's the only. It's going to depend on what other, you know, and those are some good ideas as to figure out what do you think those are. And well, like the ones that come up in my mind are like, especially in relation to like energy efficiency, if you have like an old building with single pane windows doing, you know. Currently, that's nothing that's eligible. Right, right so now, that I'm so that not, not in my takeaway, right? right. So, but so I think you'd have to get or like, just in in general, I'm like my brain is going through things yeah. we've talked about recently of like repointing brick buildings, like things yeah. that are infrastructure based, but then not not singular focused. Right, but, and and um, it's tough too because you know I think like I said, there's still going to be some more guidance that comes mm -hmm. out um, down the pike about this, and um, because one of the things that was um, you know, you, you has to be tied to this. So you could invest in water, so, but some of it at the time, because I was looking to see if would the money for towards the town garage. Mm -hmm. But right now it was, a historic not. preservation wasn't one of the things. It had to be specifically gotcha. um, into this. Invest in water and sewer, uh, and, and that may be the buildings of water sewer, but not other buildings. So I think we're gonna see a little bit more, and um, especially they're gonna have to, you know, if we're gonna get some of this money in June, hopefully we have some more, you know, more guidance kind of sugars out, so. But it's, I mean, it's, it's great, and we're very excited, um, but it's, it's certainly gonna be a lot to it. Well, and I, I definitely agree with your take of reinvesting in infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, but there's also some other things you can do to address some of the other issues, you know, to here, which maybe, and maybe it's not a ton of money, maybe it's, sorry Dave, maybe it's three or four thousand dollars here or there, so if you're getting right. 400,000, maybe it is okay to put a little into programming do, do to help, yeah, yeah, just to put a little bit to address some other need, but I don't know. Well, I guess we'll have to see what other guidance we get and how you feel about it at the time of the topic. Uh, let's see. So um, at your next meeting, just a heads up, we're gonna be, you'll have a line of credit um, application for the transfer station. Um, I had received an email, someone wanted me to get the select board to approve it tonight, but I can't approve it tonight. You don't know what the interest rate is, the terms or how much. So I, I have a Jane Strait called. By the time I got to call her back at, at um, Bar Harbor, she was gone. So the 14th, hopefully you'll have loan documents then, which you have to sign and Royalton has to sign. Well, I, I was going to bring it up during the Yep. How does that impact uh, the town? The town's involvement doing processing payroll. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Pam and I sat down and talked about it, and then and um, we met with Jerry, and and it's something that makes obviously Royalton more comfortable, I think, and, and maybe even other members of the board. Mm -hmm. I don't know. To kind of they feel it's going to separate their finances a little bit more if we don't all bank at the same bank. Pam and I didn't, mock. we don't care. It's gonna be our tax ID number. We'll still get the bank statement. Um, Pam, we already had set it up so that the transfer station has its own warrant, uh, separate from the town. So what we'll do is she can order checks from Deluxe and they'll just have that account number. So all their payables will now come directly out of their own bank account, which is actually nice for Bethel. Then we're not holding the bag. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm being rude, no, but I'm trying to answer his question. Um, but who, so, but so, town, but Bethel will continue to write the checks. Yeah, we'll continue to write the checks, and maybe, and maybe Pam and Jerry or someone else will be signers on right, the account. Right. So if Pam was gone, they could sign the checks or whatever. And so then the money comes directly from them, and then <clears throat> payroll will stay with CompuCount. And 
because it has to, because you know we're still under the same one person. They're only going to want to issue under one name and file all the taxes. So what Pam and I talked about and talked to Jerry about was when we do payables every two weeks, we'll put in one check will be made out to the town of Bethel to cover the prior week's payroll. So that way, every two weeks, we're going to be paid. So we'll get payables will be done, and we'll get our money back for payroll. So we won't be floating them this loan on a regular basis. It'll be, we'll get paid every two weeks. Um, so it's another, we, we already have to balance a check account. So now we're just balancing a check and account from Bar Harbor. So if it makes people feel more comfortable, Pam and I had no problem with it. And, and so it's fine. And then eventually, if we're able to move to CompuCount, then to do the books, then so be it. But this is where we're at right now. And as far as the line of credit, um, I, I talked to Gene and uh, Jerry, Jerry sorry, and said, you know, when we did this mascoma, I would have had to figure out, a, done a cash flow analysis. So what does Bar Harbor want? Because I can't tell you right now how much money you need. We need to do some sort of cash flow analysis. I don't think you just want to run out of the gate at 200,000 when maybe you never need more than 175 or so. And he asked me today, he said an email and wanted us to approve it. I like, no, there's no terms. There's no interest rate. There's no nothing. And a lawyer has to look at this. I said, the lawyer is going to have to review this and they have to give you a legal opinion. Bar Harbor is going to be looking for that. So there, there's a bigger process here, maybe. Mm -hmm. Does it make more sense to have the title administrator sign be a co Well, you know, I don't know. I personally don't want. I don't want to be a signer on that. On but it anything. could be Pam and Victoria. It could. It could be. Or, but it's still. I don't want Victoria. I mean, well, because she. It, it makes sense to be a BRTS member in a way because they do own part of the facility. So, and you could change a signer if Jerry was to get done, and and it's just like you approve the payables. So far, he approves the payables, and if he doesn't want to be, he his suggestion was maybe it should be Pam himself, Jerry Barcel, and then either Dave Eddy or Lindley Brainerd. So I said, whatever, we talk about it. We, we don't care. It's nice for us to have another signer, and but we kind of were putting out that olive branch because in the past, the signers are Gene Burnham as the assistant town treasurer and Pam. But if they feel more comfortable being a signer, then that's okay. We You know, we're the ones issuing the checks, so it's not like they have access to write checks. So we just want everybody to be comfortable. Um, so that's what I know about that. Um, good news, let's see if I'll show you. So you can see this, and then Jean, if you want to look at this, and then we'll pass this around. We have been, as you know, working with Frank Severy and the state of Frank Severy from Rochester and the state of Vermont to deal with our trucks on Camp Brook Road issue. So this is the new sign the state of vermont has agreed that they're going to have these signs put in they're going to they're going to what they call gate post which means they're going to post both sides of the road on both camp brook road and on bethel mountain road so that's nice for us we're excited about that that the state is you know they're being really helpful to us which we appreciate how do we get those at the front end so yeah <laughs> to that yeah exactly that's what let's talk to robert geico about that um so he's in charge uh, yeah. <laughs> lately and uh, yes we've had some good conversations about that the other good thing about camp brook road is i have talked to the state um i reached out to the state of vermont obviously we're, we're down to two people we're behind in pot patching and we had a real problem on camp brook road so they ran it up the flagpole and this wednesday and thursday the um, state of Vermont is actually going to come in and they're going to do some patching on Camp Brook Road to the tune of four ton. So, which all we have to pay for is the material. I don't have to pay for labor or anything else. So they're going to come in and take care of that. Um, well, Ryan Slack was in the office today. Obviously, he drives over the bridge from Dart to Camp Brook and there's a piece on that bridge that exposed some rebar. And uh, he's going to reach out to Alan. He said if Alan would come in and cut it, we might be able to work something out there too. So I'm very excited about that and very thankful. Um, I spoke today to Jason Mitchell, 
uh, who did our J mo did the roadside mowing last year. He's coming back again. We'd increased our budget, so we'll be able to get 47 miles and of which about 14 additional miles those last year. He does four passes, uh, you know, so it's so which is nice. The summer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nope, no. a width, so you oh, get I two winter. And um, so it'll be the second or third week in June, which is earlier for us than last year. But like he said, somebody's got to be first and somebody's got to be last. Last year we were near the end because our original bidder didn't work out. So um, so anyway, so he's coming earlier. So I think that'll be nice. Um, I also found out on Friday that um, so we received the better grants road the better grant better roads grant um, Rita Two Rivers and um, we did some work on it. She did obviously the majority of the work because she's terrific. And so for doing some work on the dirt portion of Christian Hill, there's ditching and culvert installation. I believe there's three culverts. Uh, ditching and some stone lining, so that grant was awarded. Uh, the state apparently is going to fund all their structures grants, which means I got the grant to do the bridge on uh, watershed, so that'll be taken care of. Uh, paving grants should be announced. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so hopefully we're in the money there. Um, so I'll let you know that. And then last week, um, Green Mountain Water Environmental Association. Green Mountain Water Environment Association. Um, we do obviously, you know, work with them in education. And um, Tim, I am proud to say, Tim Mills was named um, the Water Operator of the Year. And um, he, nice. his name was submitted by Aldrich and Elliot. And uh, Wayne had reached out to me and said that he does not normally do this, um, but I would like to just take a minute to read you what Wayne wrote. Uh, Tim has operated the wastewater system for the town of Bethel for 33 years, and as a resident of the town of Bethel, about four years ago, he inherited the operation and maintenance of the water system. Tim was left with very limited information on the existing infrastructure. The Bethel water system serves approximately 350 homes and businesses, and includes two groundwater wells, two storage tanks, transmission and distribution piping. The State Drinking Water Division performed a sanitary survey in 2016, which identified several major deficiencies that needed to be addressed. Also, there were frequent water leaks in the old, older water lines, which took extensive staff time and were costly repairs for the town. Tim played a critical role in gaining support to move forward and address these deficiencies. Long-range planning was initiated by the town in 2018 to identify the short and long-term needs for the system. As Tim is very proactive, the project schedule was accelerated and he took a major role for the town on the water system improvements. This initial effort included getting the support of the town managers, he put parenthesis, <laughs> as managers, plural, and select board. The improvements obviously included replacement of the original water line down Main Street, uh, small diameter galvanized water lines on side streets, monitoring improvements at the reservoir. He was actively involved throughout the design of the improvements, helping with existing utility location, providing input to improve the project and working closely with impacted property owners. This project included replacement of original galvanized water lines in several areas, making the town eligible for significant subsidy and further reducing the cost to the water system customers. Construction in several locations and during the COVID restrictions in 2020 was difficult to say the least. Even though Tim had his normal responsibilities to operate the wastewater and water systems, Tim was always available to help with locating existing utilities, coordinating shutdowns with water customers, and assisting in other ways to make the project go smoother. Construction on phase one is scheduled to be completed in the spring, or our case, summer 2021. However, the work is not done yet, and the town is now working on phase two of the improvements. Tim continues to be proactive and is always looking out for the best interest of the town and his water customers to continue to make the water system affordable and more reliable by reducing disruption to service and maintenance. So I had not, you know, Tim, uh, Wayne Elliott reached out to me and said for somebody, I, I don't usually recommend people, He's only had the system a short time, and he said he was very impressed with Tim, his professionalism, and how he'd move forward with the project. So he nominated him. Um, 
He sent me a form. I submitted, you know, similar to my experience working with Tim as well as base, the basics of the current water project. And, you know, he wasn't a sole, he wasn't the sole person, but um, so the town, they just awarded him that um, just last week. That's awesome. Yeah, so I think it was a nice boon for, for yeah. Bethel. And I think the state drinking water is really going to look at that and be really pleased um, with that as well. We know we hadn't in the past always had the best relationship. So, so um, that I think at this point is you pretty much know. I think I've told you everything at this point that I could think of. So it wasn't already on the agenda. Um. Yep, yep, he's, um, and I'm going to put that out. I actually was just looking for, um, I found uh, Carl recommended somebody local, so I'm hoping um, that I'm going to, I need to find someone to fabricate the, um, the rails, and then uh, I was just starting to look for a number, and then I had a meeting with the fire chief, but I was looking, I need to get overhead door company to come down, or at least I'm going to send him the structural plan, the plans that the structural engineer just did to get a price on the new doors. Um, so, so we're moving forward to that. Carl was great, answered some other questions. And um, so at this point, what my plan is to deal with the overhead doors. Um, I've already had CV Oil come in and take a look at the furnace. The furnace is adequately sized. They're just, for some reason, there was no duct work there. So it sits up and then it's just this open heat space. So they're, they're gonna come in and do some duct work to, it'll help the building be a little warmer. And then I need to have, um, someone come in and deal with some electrical. We have some old fans that aren't always working and just to look at the system, I'm curious if our panel is big enough or if we do an addition, is the whole thing gonna need to be upgraded so we can kind of make some right choices for that, so. Okay, select board minutes from 510. Any questions or comments? It looked good to me. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Other communications? A few items in here. Um, we also have a, a set of financials. Any questions or comments about the financials? If you think of it later, you can always send me an email. If you get it, you know, review them later and something pops up at you, feel free to send me an email. I'm always happy to answer any questions. Um, obviously, we'll be doing some audit prep. They'll come, the auditors, Sullivan and Powers will come in June. So I actually have a project on my desk right now just looking at some cash balances, making sure things tie out to the current um, trial balance, things I like to look at before they come and look at in June, just to if there's anything we need to to make any journal entries, they're done. Um, I went through and made your final appropriations after tax collection. You know, we do them in four for the board, so I just ran those, um, did those last week. So, you know, Sullivan Powers will come in June, take a peek, and, and then we'll schedule for the full audit, so. So we have this packet about days. Uh, yep, so there is, their hearing is tomorrow, tomorrow is tomorrow night at seven, and as there was just a mistake in that because, um, Brad is not the abutter, we're the abutter. Right. So I obviously acknowledge that I'm aware of it because we're the ones who denied their permit and sent them to the DRB. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, the across the street they are. Well, no, the yes. Oh, right, no, but at the cool. time they were because <laughs> the permit had to come to us or came in and then once and when we denied the permit, it was Richardson's and then they closed. Right. So. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Jesse had said that it's not Canadian National Railroad. However, that's who's on the tax bill. So he reached out to someone else and there's been a little back and forth between he and the railroad and he's, uh, Kelly's just gonna print all that stuff out. I, and I think I forwarded it on to Rick Benson. We'll put it in with the, the uh, package so they'll talk about it tomorrow night. So really for them, it's, it's this definition of quote unquote change of use. So with a change of hours and stuff kicks them into that. So they'll go to the DRB Running, which is actually nice now that Brad is not technically in a butter. We are. So I, I signed it saying, yes, I knew about it. So he would have to recruit himself from 
Well, if he was a, probably. Well, and, and it's going to become a trick because um, Owen has to recuse himself because he's on the DRB. And, and, and so it, you only have so many people on the DRB. Not everybody can <laughs> recuse himself. So you know, otherwise, you've got a problem. So we have some other committee minutes. Uh, I had one question about the Conservation Commission uh, minutes. All right, I'm not um, sure I can help talking you. talking about um, the um, timber yep. harvest up on um, Quimby. Yep. And it's mentioned in here that the money from the harvest would go to the Conservation Commission. Oh, we do. No one said that. We you never agreed to that. Um, and so I, I, I thought, I didn't think that that was. You, d you didn't agree to that. <laughs> yeah. So I'll point, I'll send them a little note. Yeah, uh, the Tim of ours yield, uh, might yield eight to $10,000. This would be designated to the Conservation Commission for trails. Oh, well, interesting. So the like board did not agree to put the money yeah. of the timber harvest. And um, it says Alan Patton will provide an estimate of how much road improvements would cost. So there's going to be well, what happened is um, Alan Patton, uh, uh, Farron Griffin, and A.J. Follinsby, the county forester, walked Range Hill. Sorry, I uh, blank the name. And I wasn't able to go. I sat down. Listen, you know, my concerns are still the same. We put money into that road after um, the April 9, 2019 flood. And that is a crazy drop off down there. So they walked it and together and Alan, and they agreed and Alan just said, look, you guys, you can't destroy this. We, we did all this work to it. So there's another access. And, and AJ Fallensby had spoken about that when he met with you all in the Zoom meeting and said he was afraid maybe there was some wetland and some private property issue. They're looking into that now and to see what needs to be done to that road to make the access better because Alan was not in favor of range, and I think once they walked it, they understood the issue. And Alan, you know, because that's steep as steep as steep. So where does the money come from to do road improvements? To go so down to timber sale. Yep. Timber yep, and that, yep, exactly. Yeah. Yep. yep, and, um, you know, because what we talked about, too, is that maybe making, at some point, to figure, at the Quimby, to make, you know, where the landing is, to have part of that be turned into, have the logger, maybe turn in that into um, a, a parking area so that people want to park and hike Quimby that there's an access. But um, it's going to depend on the deal you negotiate. You know, if, if you're going to use that road, you know, the towns, it depends, you know, what needs to be done to the road to build it up to standard, what are they going to do to it? And, um, but yes, any money that we had to part with that wasn't normal maintenance, Dave's right, I think you'd want to take it out of the timber sales. So I'll, I'll send an email to the Conservation Commission. Uh, okay, any other comments or questions about anything else in the packet? It's not in the packet. I should have said something there in public comment, but I'm not in public. <laughs> the flags around here look like crap. In the past, somebody has volunteered or whatever to replace them. Yep. And, and torn, they're filthy. It's like, uh, it's, so you know, we, we do, I, I don't know whether we need to find something to do that or we need to do that or whatever. So but it's horrible. It's all really horrible. Well, what the deal is, is every year Neil Fox buys flags and then we borrow the bucket truck from Royalton. We were set to do that on Friday to remove the flags, some of the banners, and to take down the Christmas lights. Um, but we were unable to um, borrow for that day. So we're going to, Doug Marshall always helps too, because he, you know, he's wonderful about that. He's gonna try to borrow um, this week and do some of it himself. We're also trying to coordinate with Neil Fox to get the flags from him. Okay. That is something we have not been able to do yet. Um, do you have to do the FW or something? I'm not, he buys the flags and then we reimburse Neil and it's usually a few hundred a year. Um, so we're, we're trying to get that done, and um, so we're obviously getting the bucket truck um, from Barnard. They're always great about letting everybody use it when they want, but so it looks like Doug Marsh is going to be working on that this year. One of the other uh, issues I complaints I'd received was about the crosswalks. We realize the crosswalks have not been painted yet. 
Um, I still have to, once I have my first meeting with um, Aldrich Elliott, I'm gonna figure out, I thought that the stamping, like restamping might be in our contract, so I need to find that out. But we talked about even just updating the white lines. Alan has to take a look to see if he still has some white paint left. Right now it's very difficult to get white paint because there's a plant in Texas and it's the resin in the paint is making it a very difficult for towns in Vermont to get the paint. I know that I've had at least one resident who wants the white lines of the crosswalks painted before Memorial Day. I really don't think that's going to happen. Um, we also need to look at the crosswalks as to have some structures that were broken by the pavers when they came in and did some paving last year. So I don't really want to, you know, if we're going to paint There's something some that's going to come out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so I do have, you know, a couple people who are concerned about that. I mean, obviously the crosswalks are still there um, and people, you know, need to be aware of pedestrian safety and, and all that. But um, I, if we don't have, currently have white paint, Franklin, you know, we're going to look to them, but it's where Alan usually gets it. But right now I've seen all sorts of stuff on the V-Trans are sending out hits. People are saying it's tough to get and this is why. But the flags are underway and um, so we tried to get it done last Friday, but it, it just didn't happen. But so Doug Marshall's going to poke away this week. Well, Neil, I'm, I'm not sure what Neil's health situation is. You know, he was in last week and told me he had the bill and he had, you know, he ordered the flags. And I said, just leave me the bill like you always do. We'll reimburse you okay. for it. And so we just need to coordinate with him to get the flags. And I think that's been more of an issue. I'm not sure if he normally drops them off or Alan picks them up, but it's been hard. For some reason, they just haven't been able to connect. We've left messages and just calls aren't always being returned. So, mm -hmm. um, but Doug Marshall is on the job now, so he'll probably go pound on the door and say, give me my flags. <laughs> but I uh, really appreciate uh, Doug doing that. Yeah. When you raised that, Dave, I looked at that one. Uh, it's pretty faded and as well. Yeah. Um, it is. I was yeah, looking at it the other day when I was, it's just sun bleach from the sun from being in here, but you're right. I was thinking the other day we should probably move them and put them on opposite sides of the stage, but I'd have to take out the Boy Scout handbook to remember well, what's I, on what side of the yeah, stage I, should they go. Anyway, I just. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nope, it's true. So, any other business? One other, one other comment. Uh, since our last meeting, I had occasion to go take a look over the side of the hill up where I live on Finley Bridge. I counted 60 tires down there. And then after doing that, I then came by the space between the railroad bridge and the river bridge. There was somebody dropped off half a dozen tires and just let them sit by the side of the road. My question is for the transfer station. Is there some, and for the select boards, plural, is there some way that we can uh, make it cost effective for people to actually bring the blooming tires to the transfer station rather than uh, push them over the side of the hill? I, yeah. It's just a. I know, I don't know if you're going to have, you know, dumping is off. a piece or whatever, whatever it is. It's yeah. Like six. You just drop yeah, the price, recently, right? Recently it's six? Change the six. size for the rating to include 17 and 18 inch tires because I heard yeah. quite a, you know, a lot of comments about some of the comments. I personally that. believe that the person who dropped those tires, if they were free to the transportation, they wouldn't have taken it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so there's that group of people. Yeah, I think that's a true statement. I actually have someone of the community, uh, Chuck Davis, called me today and said, Hey, Therese, there's 16 or so tires here. He's picking them up <clears throat> that were left beside the road, neatly stacked, he said. And he's, oh, yeah. they were oh nice. Today. And he's picking he's them up. He's huge ladders running around so he could climb down and get those. Well, the, he was only, he, the ones he was, he told me he was going to take were the ones beside the road. And he was going to, he was donating his time to bring them. I emailed Jen and said, Chuck's bringing in some tires, bill me. I had Oscar look at the dump site down over and he said, holy cow, it's a ways down, which is what you had said, Gene. 
And so Oscar's idea was to maybe work with Dave Aldrighetti at the fire department and see if there was some, you know, training that they could do at the same time that they're trying to bring this stuff up over. So Oscar um, had seen it and because what, what's happening, which is very sad, is people have gotten really good at dumping trash because we will pick up bags and pick through the entire bag and there won't be a label, won't be a name in it. And um, so Oscar did say he, he would like to try to work something out with the fire department, maybe a joint effort between the constable and the, and the fire department. Um, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, it would I be just, nice. You know, I'm just, I just, you may be right, Dave, but it just seems to me to be. Uh, well, I agree, but I also know that um, it would be a, a combination of both select boards that I don't, we don't, I guess the board could say we're going to be creative. <laughs> we're not going to because it costs us five, five dollars to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy, easily done. No, it, it's a pain. and. Um, so, Paul, the other thing I just thought of, um, for some reason popped in my head, I forgot to write down, I was able to reach out to Loretta, Chief Loretta Stalnicker of Royalton, and she has graciously agreed to let us use her portable sign, and we're going to adhere, put it on um, Church Street, and she said she'd let Oscar use it for two weeks. I told her I would assume, we'd assume full insurance liability for it, um, as they paid for the cruiser when it was on you know, the deductible for the cruiser. So um, she was very gracious. I told her we'd had an issue there. She asked when. I said, first thing in the morning, people aren't walking. I had another complaint the other day when taxes were due about it. And, you know, we know we have the two new speed signs coming for that are going to be solar, but there's only so much you can do when you don't have a full-time police department. So um, I did let her know, or so she, I reached out to her to ask her where I can rent one. And she said, oh, I'll let you use mine. And she said, I'll let Oscar use it. So we'll, she'll, Oscar will be putting that in at some point, and that'll, she let us use it for a couple weeks. So I just want to say thank you um, to Chief Stalnicker of uh, Royalton. Okay, any other business come forward? I thought we were going to be the 8 o'clock. Almost. Oh, oh, sorry. Almost. almost. 8.01. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. So moved. We did it in less than two hours. <laughs> we didn't start till four. Yeah, that's <laughs> <not> right. <laughs> no, I don't. Not right now. I don't have anyone to clean them. I asked someone for an estimate. So, Paul, I just need you to sign two things. I know a guy used to do it pretty reasonable. I don't think you want to talk. By the way, the, <laughs> the elevator does go three levels. Does it? So...